Hi, Chuck Hawley from West Marine, and today the topic is anodes. We're at Gravel's Boatyard down in Moss Landing, California. We got a lot of different commercial vessels and some, some recreational vessels here. And the one thing they have in common is they all have something that looks like this underneath their underneath the water line. You know, when I was growing up, we called these things zincs because inevitably, 100% of the time, they were made out of zinc. But now there are three different materials, depending on what kind of waters you operate in, that can be used for anodes. First of all, why do you use anodes? Well, you use anodes to protect your underwater metal. The anodes are made out of a material, either zinc, aluminum, or magnesium, which is more electrically active than the bronze or stainless steel or possibly aluminum that you're trying to protect. And by eroding away, it keeps your precious propellers and propeller shafts and through hulls and other items from being attacked by galvanic corrosion. So anodes are a really important part of your maintenance routine. Because they are sacrificial, they eventually wear away and you have to replace them. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the three different materials and three different categories of anodes that you need to be on the lookout for your boat. First, let's talk about the materials. As I said, it used to be that you use zinc for almost everything, but now zinc is really recommended specifically for saltwater applications. Aluminum can be used in salt, brackish water, meaning partially salt and partially fresh, and in fresh water. Magnesium is used exclusively in fresh water. So if you're in the Great Lakes or on some of the major rivers of the US or Lake Tahoe, wherever you operate and you are needing to protect your boat in fresh water, you're gonna to wanna to use magnesium. We also break anodes up into three different general categories. The first are anodes that fit on a propeller shaft or that fit on a propeller itself. The second kind of anodes are those that protect the hull and rudder and trim tabs. And these are generally either rectangular or have special shapes. And the third kind of anode are anodes that are designed to protect outdrives and outboard motors. So we're gonna go through in detail each of these three categories. The first kind of anode we're gonna talk about is a shaft or propeller anode. Now there are two main kinds of shaft anodes. There's the SL style or streamlined style, which I always used to refer to as a ball zinc since it looks roughly spherical. And of course, it's got the precise inner diameter to fit over your shaft. And then we have what's called an LC or limited clearance anode. And this is designed where you don't have it as th this much width between your cutlass bearing and the propeller. So on the vessel spike here, we can actually fit in one of these streamlined zincs, but it just barely fits. If we didn't have as much room, we'd use a limited clearance anode. Shaft anodes are frequently installed while the boat's in the water by a diver, or possibly, if you can hold your breath long enough, by you if you free dive. One of the problems is getting whatever the uh, driving mechanism is onto the fasteners of the zinc. And so in this case, this is a ball driver, which has a, it's like a, a six-sided Allen wrench on the end of it, which is shaped like a ball. So you can come in from almost any angle and find the socket and undo the socket head cap screws. So many, many zinc manufacturers will give you a socket head cap screw instead of a slot head or a Phillips head screw. The next kind of uh, zinc is one that fits on the, prop on the uh, propeller itself. This is the most common. Now this is actually just the anode portion of it, but it would be sold uh, originally with a bronze insert, and that bronze insert is threaded to fit the end of your propeller shaft. So you screw on the bronze insert as if it's the last nut on your propeller, and then you slide this over it and attach it with, again, another socket head cap screw. This provides the protection and the bronze propeller nut keeps your propeller in place. So these are available for by shaft size. So you can get them anywhere from probably three quarter inch shaft size up to very large shafts. When you replace them, you only replace the anode portion on the outside. You don't have to replace the bronze portion. This is another specialized kind of propeller anode. This one is designed for a specific brand of feathering propeller, a max prop. And so it has the six holes for the six fasteners that it expects to see made out of zinc like any of them. And it fits precisely on the end of the max prop. Now these propellers are two or three thousand dollars or more so you want to be darn sure that you protect them and there's no better way than by attaching the anode directly to the bronze propeller our second category of anodes are hull and rudder anodes now on board spike here we have examples of three of the types for example 
Here's a little bar zinc that's bolted onto her rudder. And uh, obviously brand new, no erosion on it. Then we also have these holes here on the rudder and they're designed for a rudder zinc. The rudder zinc is kind of two symmetrical halves that you split apart and you bolt one on one side, one on the other, and the fastener holds them together. You'll also find these rudder zincs used on trim tabs because they're very sleek. They just don't stick down very far into the water, so you get a little bit of anode on top of the trim tab, a little bit of anode on the bottom of the trim tab to protect the stainless plate. The third type of anode is this teardrop shape, which just gives you a nice smooth water flow over the anode. So lots of material, and the material adds up to protection, uh, but a little smoother shape than putting a big block of, of uh, metal underneath the water line. To give you an idea of what an anode looks like after it's been immersed in the water for a while, take a look at this hull anode. You can see that it's like the surface of the moon. It's been eroded uh, electrochemically over a long period of time. Now, this one actually has tabs that you can use, and you can either weld this to a steel hull boat or you can bolt it in place as it's shown here. There's quite a bit of active material left here. So the general rule is you wouldn't replace this until it was at least half gone. But haul outs are expensive and anodes aren't that expensive. So at some point you just want to replace this for extra protection. This fishing boat has Bennett stainless steel trim tabs and uh, stainless steel is not something you want to leave unprotected underwater. It's pretty good above the water, but in the water it's going to erode. So we're going to use a rudder zinc on the trim tab right here and you can see how there's a bare metal spot that's all set to go so this can be split in half and bolted in place to protect the trim tab. Our third category of anode is, are those that fit on a specific stern drive or outboard. Here's an old Volvo 280 stern drive and you'll notice right in front of the propeller is this kind of characteristic sandblasted gray color. Well that's obviously where the anode is and so that protects the lower unit. There's also one hidden here underneath the lower unit and those are specifically designed for this stern drive. So Canada Metals under the Martyr brand name makes a whole bunch of kits that are designed to fit a specific uh, either outboard motor or stern drive and they're available in all three materials depending on whether you have your boat in fresh water, brackish water, or salt water. The color coding of the package indicates what kind of material it's made out of. Now it says here uh, aluminum anodes so it's not you don't have to memorize the, the uh, color coding but you'll see a blue, a yellow, and a green package when you shop for these anodes and you want to make sure you get the right color package that has the right material in it. These are not sold in the traditional ways. These are sold by make, model, and year, just like a, going to an auto parts store or getting a part for your stern drive. So this one, for example, is for a Verado 6. So whatever stern drive or outboard that you have, you'll want to shop for the proper kit that goes with it. And incidentally, this is in a kit. It makes it very easy to replace all of them at the same time. But we also sell the individual components, again, in multiple different metals. In this same category of engine and stern drive zincs, we've also got these little ones that I call pencil zincs. And these are designed to fit into the water passages of an inboard engine. The way it works is you've got the anode portion. The anode portion screws into this brass plug and then the brass plug screws into your engine. Now you'll frequently find these on heat exchangers where you've got a lot of different metals and water circulating through there, but they might be on the side of the block too. So when it comes time to do your annual servicing on your engine, you'll want to make sure that you replace the engine pencil zincs or engine anodes. So as you can see, there's a really wide variety of anodes and it can seem complicated, but in general what you're doing is taking an existing boat with an existing anode and replacing it with exactly the same thing. Remember, there are three different materials for three different types of water and there's a wide variety of shapes and sizes. One of the best places to find out information is in the West Marine Annual Catalog or online at westmarine.com where you have a selection of over 400 different anodes. You can also get expert advice from our store associates and anytime you want you can call our 1-800 number. Thanks for watching and have a safe and maintenance free season.